61 car is very slow down the front stretch, and the leaders are coming. Now you're oh, there's a spin right in front of him. Well, contact, heavy contact in turn one. John Van Trek is clear. That's the 43 car. Rodney Combs, he got hit from the backside. That's the Lance Snack Chevrolet. Look to be the car number 80. For the Pro Boys. They may have had some contact with the 43 car. The 61 car, Benny was talking about that slow. That was Mike Olson out of New Haver Hill, New Hampshire. The Little Tree Chevrolet. There's the damage on the back of the Lance machine. Now, Ned, what do you think? With all these guys diving the pits and making their chassis adjustment they've been wanting to do? I don't believe those are front wheels. I don't believe they can afford to give up the track position right now, Benny. But certainly, if you're back towards the back, you, you might want to do that. There's a 61 car that Jerry was talking about that was slow on the front stretch. He has coasted to that point. Up here's the car that was slow that I was talking about. That's the Mike Olson car. Now we'll continue on, but right in front of him, the wreck is happening. There goes the leaders, and they will go by the crash as Combs hits the wall and he comes off the corner, comes off the wall. Once again, the crash is already in progress, and Combs, some pretty heavy damage to the back of that car. There you see that damage. Randy LaJoy down. Take a look at this NASCAR serial scoring presented by MCI of Jeff Burton. Man, he has come in a hurry, and he is about to take the lead, not quite. Why don't you look how this car comes off the turn. Once he gets that thing set, presses that accelerator, it really motors off the turn. At that time, he, he had to slow down a little bit. Well, not too much, because he almost got it beside of him. But look at it. That car sticks right down oh, the Oh, and the brake right in front of him. Wow. They got out and got by. Caution is out. Boy, Stevie Reeves, I don't know how he got by that car. And more cars spin up in turn four. Tim Bender loops it around. His car comes to rest in the middle of the apron. There's the car number 73 that initiated the caution flag. His car up against the uh, concrete wall or near the concrete wall. That's Brandon Butler, local driver. There's a 17 car. We see some heavy damage to the back of the Tim Bender car. He apparently trying to get his car woed down and got some contact from behind. That will bring out the second caution flag of the day. There's Brandon Butler's uh, machine, his fourth Thunderbird. Well, that was close, right in front of the leaders. Carl Simmons puts the yellow flag out for the second time. Well, they need to pit now, won't they? Folks, just watch. Watch this car right here. That's Brandon Butler as he comes off the corner. And here are the leaders. There's the 74 and the 9. Now watch as they come off the corner. And Brandon Butler steps on the accelerator, and around he goes. He goes up the racetrack. Stevie Reeves barely gets by, and LaJoy loses the lead as the 9 car of Jeff Burton takes the lead. Well, what a heads-up move by Stevie Reeves, the former USAC driver. Quick on the pedals as the leaders now will make their way to pit road. Yes, before now. No. Boy, there's that situation you were talking about, Jerry. That was a close deal. Well, apparently the, the contact a moment ago. The left rear tire split. See the left rear tire yeah. split. Yeah. Apparently cut a tire on Mike McLaughlin's car number 34, so a tough break. I mentioned the contact he had with Tim Bender, and now he will make an unscheduled pit stop. We'll show you again. I think we have a replay of, of exactly what Jerry was talking about going down in the corner. Now there is the, the tire is flat now as he goes up the racetrack. The, and then we see Paul Shane Hall is trying to go by on the outside and almost got collected in the wall. And, and right now we do have a car in the wall. That looks to be Stanton Barrett's car just skittered up across the racetrack in turn two. There's the Memorex Chevrolet. He turned the wheels, but the car didn't turn, and he just barely kissed the concrete, and once again, the car goes high. I hope he's got a right front tire flat on that car or something. No caution yet. There we see him up against the wall. We see some contact where he made with the wall. break for the Ron Neal owned car of Stanton Barrett. He's still running. He has not been to pit road, but the car not up to speed. And the leader, that's, that's the leader just moving right beneath Stanton Barrett there in heavy traffic. That's the 19th Mark Green. 
happened during the commercial coming down pit road just just sheared that right front tire away well you can see there's some heavy damage to the fender right behind the tire so he made contact with someone and that's what made the tire go flat he's had a tough time today with flat tires had a left rear a little earlier here's the that's what we were being told trouble now. trouble turn four big wad up try to slow down slow down uh clear on the bottom wow big wad yeah. up is right there you go and good a big job. break for Randy the car up in front of you there. Yep. Good job. Big break, because now he got that black flag. Now he can come in under the caution. And here at the first pass start finish lines, what's left of Tracy Leslie's car number 63. There's Shane Hall's Lux car. But the caution there is Leslie's car number 63, the Pontiac, as the field comes by, and they still have some speed. He's sitting right in the middle of the racetrack. He made some heavy contact with the wall with the right side of that car. car of Jeff Fuller. Is that, I don't know if that's the Ed Spencer car or the Elton Sadler car, the white car back there. It looks like the rest of them are going to be able to dodge the crash. Different angle already in progress to bring out the fourth caution. There is uh, Fuller, Purvis. Car spinning backwards with Shane Hall. And I think that's the 20, that's the 29 car of Elliot Sadler that goes by showed up that way. So he is almost two laps down. That was my mistake. I saw that, thought he was one down, but he's still the lap down. And he's the caution. He's out. He's mm -hmm. Todd Bodine, the 36 car. Whoa, trouble in turn four, sideways. Joe Bessie goes up over the hood. And he's going to get that caution if he can get through when he gets Whoa, that. Whoa, cars barrel in Shane Hall. The track is com almost completely blocked. They can barely squeeze by up high. And here come the leaders. And Jeff has a decision to make. Where do I go? Do I go down pit road? No, he's staying out. Keep it going. Everything will be fine. Good job. And so the eight car and the 36 car, Todd Bodine got a lap back there as well. There's Joe Benton's power team machine. Uh, heavily damaged. Shane Hall involved. Doug Reed's car number 97. The 96 of Stevie Reeves involved the 73 car sitting up there. That's the efforts of Brandon Butler. Well, Stevie Reeves car, we can't see the right side, but I tell you what, it looks like some pretty serious damage to that car. Field snaking their way by just between that accident and the end of pit road. And Stevie Reeves is trying to drive the car off, and Stevie, you forget it, it's not going anyplace. Shane Hall climbing out of the car number 85. Look, take a look at what's left of his Lux Monte Carlo. He hadn't had much good luck today in the country style sponsorship there for Shane. Uh, heavy damage on the front of his Chevrolet. His car will need an assist from the wrecker probably to get away. And the leader so uh, will follow the pace car down pit road by virtue of the fact that the track is essentially blurred. Maybe as many as five or six. These are the cars behind the incident. And watch as there we see the double zero buckshot get into one of the pro boys that's a 56 car and now watch as here's there's a 17 spin and watch that there's the butler car and man oh man shane hall comes in hard and elliot sadler up on the outside trying his best to get woed so he doesn't run into anything randy randy porter and tim bender and if Porter doesn't pull out of the way, the cars have no way to get by. But take a look at Green, Jeff Green coming by. Right behind him is Todd Bodine, then the leader, Jeff Burton. A few cars did go up on the outside. They saw a hole wide enough up there that could get through, but that uh, close call there. Well, Kyle Petty is caught up with Stevie Reeves. Kyle, what? That'll be live coming up next. The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, Napa 200, and following that, right back here, following the truck race for happy hour. That's NASCAR Winston Cup's final 60 minutes of practice and problem. Lorraine Right after this blue car. Go, 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 go. Good job. Good so job. The caution is out as Randy LaJoy has spun out. And okay, there's all be behind there. The six is the next car. Bill Parsons is trying his best to get back. Oh, and look, Doug Reed is there. He's going to make it. He's going to Didn't save that lap. Bill Parsons on a slick move gets back on the lead lap. That could
should be a move with the races. Now they will come in and be able to make these final pit stops under the caution flag. And that will put Phil back on the lead lap, meaning seven cars are on the lead lap. And they will light it up out there in the Craftsman Truck Series. That's coming up at the conclusion of our Hardy's Fried Chicken Challenge 250 in about 10 to 12 minutes. Different banks, six degrees on the bottom roof, nine degrees in the middle, 12 degrees on the top side of the racetrack. Great, great competition. And Mark Martin not able to. Oh, on that receipt, there's the. That might be a break for Phil Parsons. It's Kim Bender. Caution is out. Well, indeed, Phil Parsons, uh, who was being patient, may have saved those tires and may have gotten himself in position to maybe improve his finishing spot. There's a channel on the Chevrolet that six cautions like today does indeed be shown to the field. Tim Bender's spin out of turn two. Now we'll be able to get in position for a shootout. As Take him off the corner. Bender's nobody there with him then. Nope, just looks like he lost it coming off the corner, down on the inside. Back end broke loose with him and he spins her around. Looks like he makes a how important those tires are. Jeff Burton trying to hang on. He can hang on for 10 laps or so. And we see the 99 car. Ben Allen spin, and there's 29 to Milton Sawyer. Joe Bessie spins into the side of the Keep rolling if you can. Keep rolling if you can. And I believe, I don't think he'll end under caution because he's got too many laps to go. But if they did, I think Jeff Burton would be able to rely. And even if they. If they do get restarted, that's going to be an advantage because he's going to have a full car length in front of him instead of being run side to side. Oh, right in front of Burton and Jason Keller was Joe Bessie's car trying to get right, and they had to split Bessie. Not to run into it. Glenn Allen brings the Deluxe Air car, the Bill Papillon machine. Here's the race to the line a moment ago. See who got it back to the stripe first. Okay, here we come, and let's see. There's the stripe, and it's Burton. Wow. Who is it? I think it's Burton down on the inside. I think his nose got to the line first. Behind by Keller. Burton will get split with Conway. Keller makes the pass as the white flag waves. Burton goes from first to third. Now, can Jason Keller hang on this last lap with that fast charging Mark Martin? He's moving in as they go into turn three. Oh, he's going up the racetrack. He did it on time. He went in too high. and Jeff Burton wanted to go to victory lane. That's where his car ended up when it finished sliding. There is the Slim Jim crew. Unbelievable. There's right side of your screen. There's the winner right there. That's Mark Martin. What a finish. What a finish. And here is Burton. You think he is not disgusted? Here's the first move for Keller to get by Jeff Burton. Puts a little tap on Jeff Burton, gets him loose, drive by on the inside. Mark Martin will come by as well, dropping Jeff Burton back to third. All right, here's the next move up in turn four as Keller leads it in. But there we see the nine car, the 57, just making contact. What happened to 57? Bill Weber? Well, Jeff Burton, I was going to try and talk to him for a minute, and uh, he's obviously not very happy with how things ended up. Talking it over with a member of uh, Jason Keller's crew, we wanted to discuss the end of the race with Keller, and now uh, that's all over with, and he's just going to walk off to the Winston Cup garage where he's going to practice for tomorrow's Pontiac Excitement 400. Well, well, obviously tempers flaring down there in a hurry. There is Jeff Burton. You drive your heart out, and now the Win Dixie Cruise, the Slim Jim Cruise. But see, what happens is those guys think that Jeff, that Jeff Burton caused the 57 car to go high. That's not no, the case. No, it's not the case at all. I think it went to turn too hard. Look